How's it going guys? Winter Kills here. We are back with another feature match. Post commentary of course as always. We got DDD OCG variant versus some post adjusted list. Hero, Dark, Pepe, whatever you want to call it. He's, got, he's kind of got a weird 50 card hero based guiding Ariadne type deal deck that he was trying out for the locals that we had last night. Uh, pretty interesting build. Definitely has a little bit of synergy, but it wasn't what he intended to turn out to be. He said he had just a little too many too many things trying to happen at once with the deck, and it's just kind of a jumbled mess, if you know what I mean. So Draco face off out that vector, and then he will grab that Summoner Monk for Pendulum Sorcerer. Pendulum Sorcerer is just going to destroy the vector to grab monkey board to ultimately grab his lizard draw to complete those scales. Pedal him out, Shadow Mist, Luster, and Vector. Shadow Mist, of course, is going to search him a mask change. Heroes have surprisingly a lot of synergy in Pepe, since if you can just get that Pedal summoned out, Shadow Mist, there you go, you've got your free search, and you've got a Dark Law. To work with, which is a very, very powerful card. Definitely an awesome utility, uh, especially since the deck is hit. Uh, definitely a great utility that the deck could use as a little bit more of a backup. So Ignis to Reflessia and Dark Law will be his turn one field. Definitely a very tough field to get over. He's gonna add Bubble Man off the Shadow Mist once it hits the grave due to its effect. He's gonna pass turn. Now you're probably wondering how is he playing OCG DDD? Well, it's a good question. Uh, he did end up printing out some of the OCG cards and putting them in his deck. He did play in the tournament with it today, and uh, he did play. Like I said, he did play in the tournament with it, but he ended up. Just giving everybody who played the match since he was using proxies out of uh, courtesy, even if he won or not. Um, yeah, and he's got all the uh, OCG cards in there that he wants to play, and it's actually really cool. They're all printed out. They're not just, you know, regular pieces of paper with names on them, so you can, like, get a better visual of the cards. And it's actually uh, pretty interesting to uh, see this matchup ahead of time since we won't be getting the support for DDDs, sadly, until July. 15th, I think, is when Pendulum Domination Structure Deck will be finally released over here. And I know him, and not only me, and there's a lot of other people who are waiting for this to happen. Uh, I really want the, the new cards as well. So he did Foolish Burial. The uh, Copernicus is he going to bring up the English text from Dueling Network on his phone there. The pictures that he uh, took the night before, just so he'd have translations ready, because some of the cards he printed out could not print out in English. They're only in Japanese, so you gotta work with what you gotta work with, you know? So there is Slime, and discarding uh, another monster, not too sure what that was. Debating what to go for, Genghis or Dark. I'll summon out Dark. Oh, he ditched a Doom King out of his hand with Slime, okay. And Reflesia is just gonna send Bottomless. And they're just going to scoop right there and head into game two, see if he has any better luck. Because that first turn Dark Law was brutal. <laughs> Especially in a deck like DDD, it's very hard to deal with a card like Dark Law. Wavering Eyes getting rid of Vector and Pendulum Sorcerer, I believe. You can go grab him a Monkey Board, most likely, or Skulker Bat Joker. Or do that. <laughs> you know, grab Monkey Board, grab Joker, Normal Summon Joker, grab Lizard Draw. Very, uh... I think, it's, I think it's good that those cards got hit, because uh, as you can see how busted Monkey Board is, it literally, it's like a scout that you don't have to pay for, since they're just going to complete your scales, and it can grab Lizard Draw, which is better than any other Cliff Ward scale we've seen, because it gets you a free draw, and that combo with Gee Turtle is basically a pot of greed. So, Pendulum Sorcerer is going to pop up his scales, um, he's going to add, I believe the Gee Turtle off second donkey, and then... Uh, Master or Sorcerer is gonna destroy the scales, adding Lizard Draw and Part Naga. Part Naga, very nice card to play, uh, as it can give your uh, one of your monsters, I believe, 
300 attack per performer pal card you control, which is actually pretty relevant when you can um, just beat over problem cards that you normally wouldn't be able to without having to go to the extra deck. Drawing some cards off his scales there. He's going to go into Nightmare of Flesia. No Dark Law, but still a very tough board to deal with. Nightmare is going to slow him down, and Reflesia is going to slow him down even more. There's the Dark Contract with Hellgate. You can see that DD Lamia up in there. Nice and proxied. I was actually debating about doing this, and if you guys want to see a deck profile, uh, IRL deck profile, not Dueling Network, and some printed out cards if you want to see that. Deck list. Um, maybe we'll, we're, we'll do that. We'll see. It'll be interesting. But yeah, he's gonna add Copernicus, and there's that Raigeki, that savage Raigeki. He let his opponent think he's got it on lock until the very last second, and then nope, you ain't got shit. Because I got this Raigeki that doesn't uh, care what first turn field you have. There's his hand there, pretty pretty good. Summoner monk, sorcerer. Naga and Mass Change. Mass Change is kind of useless at the moment, but he can go grab uh, Shadow Mist, but he'd have to ditch the Mass Change in order to do that. Kind of counterproductive at that point. Um, unless, of course, uh, he has another target for Shadow Mist when he summons it out. Uh, that's a whole other story if he can grab another Mass Change anyways. Debating on what to foolish here with the Copernicus. I think he's going to send Wise King Chaos, not too sure. Or maybe Doom King. He's gonna send Slime and I believe Lamia to the grave for Genghis. Genghis has a very awesome effect. Anytime a DD is special summoned to your side of the field, you can special summon a DD from your graveyard. That sets up huge combos. It just sucks that we do not have this card yet because, you know, making dark is not the best first turn play usually. Like, it's just such a, I don't know, it's just kind of boring to have to go into the same fusion monster over and over again. So here's a perfect example of the card in action. Let's special summon out Dark, Gangus will trigger summoning out Doom King at 3k. Gonna swing them at 3k, 28, and 2000. That's 7800 damage right there. If he already hasn't taken any damage previously. He's going to summon Lamia by sending that contract to Grave. Lamia can special summon itself from hand or graveyard by sending any contract from your hand or face up on the field or DD from hand or field to the graveyard to summon it out. Very, very awesome card. He's going to go get Gale Alexander for that extra damage, I'm assuming, to seal the deal. Because I believe Gale Alexander has a little more attack than Flame King Genghis does, so... Why not push for that extra 200 damage I think he needed there. So there's Joker. Obviously I already have a free set of scales like that. And Rhoda for Shadow Mist. Gonna be setting up some Dark Law shenanigans for sure. Uh, at this point. He's got scales, he's got Shadow Mist. There's no way he can't grab that. Mass Change once he Pendulum summons it out. Luckily that's all he's got to Pendulum summon out it looks like. Uh, so it won't be too bad for DDD. See, so he's got a twin twister in hand, which could spell problems for any dark contracts that he wants to activate. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. Right now he's debating on whether or not he could go into Nightmare and sacrifice the, the Dark Law play. Because he does have the setup. He could go into Reflesia. He could do a lot of plays. They're gonna go for the Dark Law play though, as expected. Shadow Mist is gonna go search in Bubble Man. Bubble Man, a uh, very unique. Uh, not going to search Bubble Man, it looks like. Gonna opt to not use Shadow Mist's effect when it hits the grave. Interesting, interesting. We'll see uh, how that plays out. Leaving one card in hand, which I believe is just an instant fusion. Which, uh, not gonna be able to use if he wants to have discard fodder for that Twin Twister that he has set. So, 
Gonna have to sacrifice that. Slow down the DDD train. There's the Dark Hole to get rid of that Dark Law right off the bat. Dark Hole, very, very good side card to uh, put in for uh, decks that bring out problem cards, especially against Pepe. I think it's a great side deck card, uh, as well as Chalice. I know, especially for me, is it's it's great to side in Chalice against Pepe because they make Dweller and you can just Chalice it and not care and still make your plays and win. And it's also great to side in Dark Hole because if they make their first turn field of Nightmare, there's def huge defensive boards like Nightmare, Reflexia, Dark Law. It's great to have a Dark Hole just to get rid of everything. And you know what? Let's let's be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh now. Uh, now that those cards are gone, so there is Night Howling. You gotta summon out that Kepler. Kepler will, s when special summon or normal summon, can grab you a dark contract. But unfortunately, that's gonna get Twin Twistered away on discarding his Instant Fusion. We pull up the text for Night Howling. It's a level three Fiend Tuner, I believe. When normal summon, you can special summon a DD monster from your graveyard. So it's very, 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 very good card. Especially since it can go grab you the big fusions in the deck like Wave Oblivion, King Caesar, Ragnarok at 3,200. Just to be able to cap uh, a monster that can go fetch you such big monsters or more monsters that set up combo plays like Genghis. Uh, just a very, very good card. And over there you can see he did Pendulum Summon out the Joker. Of course, no effect is when we get that effect upon normal summoning it. He's going to run over the Night Howling. Not sure. I think Night Howling has 300 attack. I could be wrong, though. I know it's not too high. It's generally low. Left there with just the Kepler. And there is a Copernicus. Is gonna, when summoned, uh, is going to foolish any DD from deck to grave. Debating on what to send here. He's gonna send Swirl Slime. I think I think at this point, when once the structure deck is released for DDDs, the deck becomes extremely combo oriented, and uh, it definitely takes a little while to learn. So it, it's gonna be a very interesting uh, deck to play. I think and it's definitely gonna take a while to learn as well. Just because there's so many options. You go Synchro, you go Fusion Build, you know, there's so many things you can do. He's going to Swirl Slime. We'll special summon out that Lilith. Lilith is going to add back uh, the Night Howling from Grave. He's going to go for Caesar, but it's going to get time spaced. Again, shutting down his play once more. Uh, Would have been better if that Caesar hit the graveyard somehow. Just get a search of a contract. Caesar and I think Marksman Teller are very, very good cards. Uh, just because if you happen to go into Tell and Caesar, they set you up so much advantage, you know, if they hit the graveyard. So he's got Raigeki and Turn Toad in hand. Not, I'm, I don't, I'm not too sure what scale Turn Toad is. I think it's a low scale. Uh, but it's not going to matter. He's got Wavering Eyes anyways. But I think at this point, he's exhausted his monkey board already, so he's going to grab Guiding Ariadne and normal summon that. And then attack directly for 18 for Joker. And he's going to pass. There's the graveyard for DDDs. He's got Copernicus and Lilith. Foolish Contract and a Dark Hole. How can he play out of this? Doesn't have too much to work with over there on the Pepe side of things. Um, just an Ariadne and a Joker. Of course, when that Ariadne gets destroyed, he will get to search uh, a counter trap. So he's got to watch out for that. That normal summon of the Kepler into the contract into Swirl Slime. Still one of the best normal summons for the deck. He's going to discard Swirl Slime. Another for Genghis. Banishing, oh, it looks like it was going to be Copernicus. Banishing Swirl Slime for the summon of Doom King. Doom King will trigger Genghis. Genghis will summon out Copernicus. He's going to Foolish a DD. He's going to send Lamia. Now he's got access to some really cool Synchro plays. We'll see here in just a moment. I think that the Synchro options the deck has now are just really, really cool. 
Uh, I think in his build he's playing Formula to help go into cards like Black Rose or Trish during your opponent's turn. So there's the Lamia. Sending a, I believe, a DD or Dark Contract from his hand to the grave to special summon that from his hand or grave. It's going to look to go into Cursed Blood King Siegfried, maybe. He does have the 6 and the 8. Might as well get a draw off that formula before going into the Siegfried. It's going to run over both his monsters. Ariadne is going to trigger, revealing some counter traps. Going to go Strike, Strike, Warning. Now, it's usually a tough decision for this because, you know, if you give them warning, they do have to pay more for that. But Strike can't stop normal summons, which is very key to understand. So he's going to go ahead and give him Strike instead of the warning. Because this goes on any longer and he's got, he can normal summon a, well, I guess he could still strike the uh, normal summon monster's effect anyways. Um, so yeah. I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot. So there's Cursed Blood King, Cursed Hex Blood King Siegfried. Most powerful synchro I think the deck has to offer. Basically can negate once per turn. During either play's turn, a face up spell or trap, just like that. He does have the right Geki, but Cursed Blood King says no. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. And OCG DDD will take the match against some post adjusted list Pepe. Uh, this is a 50 card hero Ariadne variant. Kind of weird, but uh, very interesting to see a different variant of the deck finally. I think the new list allows for some innovation, and I think it makes the deck a lot funner uh, for those who were playing it beforehand. I think a lot, I know a couple people that I know that are playing it are kind of happy about the adjusted list because it allows for innovation, as I just said, um, and some new cards to play. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little look into the future, perhaps, with DDD. Um, and if you did, leave a like, leave a comment down in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new, guys. It's greatly appreciated and cannot thank you enough for that. And as always, Winter Kill signing out. We will see you in the next video.